Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, how much do presidential term limits matter if you're a leader in Africa? We'll look at the debate over how long presidents should stay in office. So we have a vibrant community online in Africa, also watching TV. Joining this conversation, marshalling the conversation is Omar Bada. What's going on? It really is quite interesting, given how obvious it is to some people that term limits are an important part of democracy, uh. and for others, it's just so obvious that it's not. So we have Boris over here who says, without presidential term limits, there is no window to allow fresh air of democracy in. On the other hand, you have Emino over here who says, I don't believe in term limits. What I believe in is good leadership. So, is good leadership good enough? Let us know using the hashtag AJStream. Hi there, I'm Elliot Ross. I'm a senior editor at Africa is a Country, and I'm in the stream. Changing the limits on term limits, it's a scenario in some countries where presidents are trying to rewrite their constitutions to stay in power. More than 30 states around Africa limit the number of times a president can serve. But just this year, Rwanda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Republic of Congo have questioned term limits for heads of state. In some cases, the prospect of a third term president has been a source of protest and violence. Today, we want to examine attitudes towards term limits and discuss what impact they have on democracies. With us to talk about this via Skype in Harare, Zimbabwe, Nigel Mugamu. He is the founder and CEO of 263 Chat, an online discussion forum. Good to have you here, Nigel. Kampala, Uganda, Patience Akumu is a lawyer and writer. Hi, Patience. Also in Kampala, yeah. hello there, Simon Kaheru. He is a media analyst and former Ugandan government spokesperson. And in, hello. And in Kigali, Rwanda, Sunny Nayumbia. He is an associate editor with Rwanda's English language newspaper, The New Times. Good to have you here, everybody. Simon, your president is often on a list of the longest serving presidents in the whole world. Um, is that a bad thing? Why should it be such a big deal? There are lots of democracies around the world where there are no term limits. The UK, France, Australia. So what? Yeah, so, so you're, you're quite right. There are very many countries out there that don't have term limits. And um, the, the problem with most of the people who refer to our president or many of the African presidents and talk about how long they've been in power is they seem to focus all power in the office of the president or in the person of the, the, the president, which is totally wrong. And yeah. you, you heard a comment just a few minutes ago of somebody talking about um, it should be about good leadership rather than term limits, because leadership cuts across a, a much wider sweep than just the presidency. Sure. Let me just go to Patience. Patience, you're also in Uganda. So your president, I've met him, he's a very charming, charismatic person. He's been around for a really long time. Is that a problem for you? Yes, because what we are talking about is simply theoretical. You know that it's possible to have a president who's long standing but who's a good leader, but most certainly and other presidents in Africa who have tinkered with constitutions are doing it because they are not good leaders and the people do not want them. So they are finding ways to consolidate themselves into power and they are doing everything. If there were good leaders, wouldn't actually be having this conversation. The fact of this conversation alone should tell people like Simon that there is a real problem and there is almost no such thing as good leadership without some limit, at least not in Africa. That's not what the reality tells us. So we have people in our online community who are echoing Simon's point of view. We have Messai over here who says, I don't get the need for term limits. What matters most is serving the interest of citizens. And then we have Marianne over here who says, why not? If it's the wish of voters to have this president go on, then it's 100% okay. Nigel, in that sense, can you imagine a scenario in which term limits could actually be undemocratic because they're preventing the people from wanting their president to continue moving forward with, this, with the terms? Um. I'll tell you my view. Um, you know, 60, 70% of Africa is uh, the population are youth, are the youth. I'm all for term limits. Uh, how else are we going to get the young people involved in democratic processes? Um, how else are we going to get a, a young person involved in, in, in being a leader? So let's let, let's let's have term limits. Uh, you know, I, I always 
refer it back to um, the constitution of that country to say what does the constitution say our constitution for example has term limits it never used to before but we changed our constitution in may 2013 and um, so there are term limits in that constitution so i'm, I'm all for change let me just bring in sunny sunny uh, rwanda has a pretty controversial vote coming up. It's a referendum about whether your president should be out of run for a third term. So he was elected first in 2000. He's had two back-to-back -back terms, so that's 14 years. Uh, do you see an issue with a successful president continuing on and on and on? Well, uh, um, first of all, uh, I want to uh, greet you Thank and you. Uh, say that uh, Kigali is great. I have, a, I have a problem with the way you, start, you started that question by calling it a controversial, a controversial uh, election or referendum. Yeah. Uh, have have a look here at my laptop. Sonny, have a look at my laptop. I was actually quoting this. I should have just shown it to you, sort of all. Rwandans okay. head to polls in controversial referendum. So I was actually looking at this but, as I was, I was talking to you. Um, OK. But here's the, 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 what my, I challenge yeah. you. Yeah, and, go ahead. Um, that's, that's, that's from The Guardian, right? Let me just scroll um, up. So, that's the Guardian. No, Deutsche Welle. So the question that I must ask, okay, well, um, it's not uh, anything local. It's, this election is only controversial to those who are looking at it from the outside. Yeah, Here, from the inside. This, from the inside, it's not controversial at all. I mean, we had above 3 million people petitioning parliament asking for uh, amendment of the constitution to remove term limits or to change them. So I, I'm not sure how you can call it controversial. So if the uh, referendum passes, then uh, your president can run for a third term of seven years and then another two terms of five years. And there will be term limits for five years rather than seven years. We add all of that up. It could be 31 years in power. That's not yes. uh, 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 from the inside. Uh, is that what Rwandans are hoping for? Well, um, I, there's an there's, um, interesting poll that came out uh, recently by uh, iPost Mori, which is a market research company in the UK. And these are just some of the facts. These are the things that they found out when they interviewed people. They found out that 92% of all respondents would vote for Paul Kagame if elections were held today. 82% of all respondents say that Rwanda is a full democracy, and 78% believe that are optimistic that their lives will be better in a year. So I'm pretty sure that such, such, very, like, such high numbers show just how uh, in touch people are but with so the choices they Let me ask it. you this. I mean, we have some people who are echoing that sentiment. We have Hope here online who says the same recipe doesn't work for everybody. In Rwanda's case, why stop a good thing while it's working just for change's sake? But on the other hand, we have Adam here who says in Kigali, fish aren't free to jump in there, answer you. Big brother Kagami is watching. Could that be a potential explanation for why it isn't controversial internally? It's because people who oppose it are afraid to speak up about it. Again, I just, I just, quoted, a, uh, I just quoted a survey made by an independent... Yeah, uh, I want to jump in on one point here. Can I? Yeah, you said, I hear you too. You, you patients said, are bringing you in. Do the moment. people in Rwanda yeah. want, the, want Kagame to stay on for another 31 years? Uh -huh. Possibly not. But they do want the option of him staying on for maybe another five right. or six or seven. Yeah. They, they, they should have the right to keep him for as long as they want to keep him sure. and make changes when they want to without there being a certain limit that is fixed according to aspirations or ideas that they probably don't agree with. Patience? Or that they probably don't the feel are necessary. Uh, Simon, 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 uh, Simon, sorry, in 2003... Like you to know that that is usually how it starts. Even Museveni, even Mugabe were once the darling of democracy of the West, you know? The figures were glowing like, and we're not the talking about the West. was apparently developing. But when but a leader not, of a state we're not talking about the West. going to go back, there is going to be regret by the mere fact that you are in power and there are no checks. You say it yourself. He should do what he wants. Leaders are not supposed to do what they want. They're supposed to abide by laws. And if they are tinkering that with are the made laws, by the people. And, 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 but, but patients, you've got to, to agree that, that laws are changed. Well, actually, that's, that's in the case of Uganda, right. for instance, and we had a referendum. Patients, take a pause so I can hear Simon. 
than an opinion poll. Patience and Simon, stop both. Patience and Simon, both stop talking for a second so I can hear you both. Um, patience, let Simon just respond to you. Go ahead, Simon. Simon, go ahead. Um, sorry, uh, uh, me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, patience talks about the rule of law. And um, I was we pointing out that in the case of Uganda, for instance, we followed the law. We changed the constitution going by a referendum. Same type of referendum that was held in countries in Europe just a couple of years ago that goes to the people and asks them, what do you want? And the majority of the people made a choice. And that choice is what everybody is abiding by. Mm. And democracy is not just about this one item called presidential term limits. No. Yeah. The president is only one leader in a country. There are thousands of other leaders in this country, at least I can speak about Uganda. And each of those leaders has a responsibility of leadership. Each of them has a certain role that they must play. And even the voters themselves have a role and responsibility to check the leaders, to drop them if they're not doing what they're doing, what they're supposed to be doing, and to select the ones that they feel are going to be doing a better job, with or without any of these artificial uh, tenets or ideas that may exist from, you know, you know Nigel, where you come from. Nigel, what do um, Zimbabweans feel about, and how do they feel about President Mugabe? He's been in power since the 1980s. President, could you please repeat that again? Yeah, President Mugabe. How do uh, Zimbabweans feel about President Mugabe? If you, if, you could, if you could get a sense of what was happening in Zimbabwe regarding your president, how popular is he? How do they feel about President Mugabe mm -hmm. in, in Zimbabwe? Yeah. In power since 1987. Uh, no, 1980. Uh, so he has. Oh, okay, even so longer than I thought. Yeah. Um, look, it's. Obviously, well, right now, if I'm talking about right now, people are waiting to see what happens with the succession debate. I think people have generally accepted the fact that um, he's coming to the tail end of his, I guess, his, um, you know, and, and now, now the issue, the focus is more on the succession, so who's going to be the next president? Um, I think people outside the country make a bigger deal about him being the president for 35 years. I think us here in Zimbabwe, we're more interested in so who is going to be the next president? Uh -huh. So um, when he was at uh, an African Union meeting in June in South Africa, President Mugabe actually attacked another president, the one in Burundi, Pierre Nkurunziza, for staying in power too long. I didn't know whether he was being tongue-in-cheek or being serious. Uh, have a listen to this and then maybe you can make up your own mind. But when we have served two terms, ah, we have not done much. And two terms was like two weeks. <laughs> so we want to go more. So you want another another term, and you must find an excuse. Uh, the, the, the first term I served, oh no, it was not a real term. <laughs> but you were there for five years. <laughs> oh no, uh, it was parliament which, which chose me. I should have been chosen by the people, so that one does not count. <laughs> and the others say it counts. President Mugabe being very witty there, but also making very pointed remarks about what's happening in Burundi. Even worse situation in Burundi right now, because Pierre Nkurunziza decided that he was going to run for a third term. What are you seeing about this? That's right. And people are complaining about how bloody the situation is. So we have somebody named Ion Burundi tweeting in, saying, some are killing their people and will do anything to keep themselves in power here, in reference to Burundi. Sunny, in cases where vi mass violence breaks out over something like that, would you say that cases that extreme might warrant saying that we should do away, we should actually impose term limits and stick to them to avoid bloodshed? Well, this is what I personally believe. I, I believe that the issue of governance in Africa is not an issue of term limits or removing term limits. If I, I doubt whether the people in Burundi uh, were are out in the streets or are fighting simply because of term limits or the removal of. I, I'm sure that there Sonny, are other but how issues. Can, but how can you say that? Because the actual protests and the violence actually started exactly when their president said, I'm actually running for a third term. The first term didn't count. I'm going to go but for I also another do term. Believe, yeah, but but, but, uh, Femi, but I also do because believe we have violence in many other parts of this continent, sure. in countries that, do, that have term limits in place. Sure. We've had violence in Uganda during times when we did have term limits. 
Oh, oh, absolutely. But, 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 to, but to Sonny, but to Sonny's, but Simon, to, Sonny, to Sonny's point, he said, I doubt if the people in Burundi were, were out in the streets because of term limits. I'm just going to say in this occasion. No, they were out in the yes, streets. Because, because, they were out, because the, the they were out in the, excuse in the Simon, Burundi excuse me, Simon. 10 years ago, 15 years they ago, were, was not were, because of term limits. And there was conflict there at that time as well. I mean, we've really got I to go deeper than this issue called presidential term limits. Mm -hmm. we really need Do you want to, to tell people in Burundi that? Do you want to tell people in Burundi society. that, Simon? Do you want to tell and, people and, and in we, Burundi that? We also that? need to stop assessing these African countries as if they are monarchies, you know? The, the, the whole concept of term limits appears to be uh, monarchical to me, mm -hmm. whereas instead we need to be looking, as I keep saying, at leadership on the whole, leadership and governance, as, 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 as Sunny calls it, rather than just presidential term limits. Not everything can be around the person of the president. Okay, you can have presidents I mean, rotating like musical chairs. And Simon, I, I'd like us to talk about the issue of like countries like in Mali. Mali had had uh, term limits for decades, but what, what, how is Mali now? And and, and, and we could talk uh, talk about some of the more advanced economies well, in Europe that don't have term limits and are doing extremely well without them. A couple of mm -hmm. them are even monarchies themselves. So, so focusing on presidential term limits as this major governance issue, I don't think is the right thing. I think on this continent, we are supposed to be looking at what the elite are doing, what constitutes leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, how do we develop these continents? Who are the people that we call leaders? Who are, the, who are the lead academics that think up solutions? Who are the lead implementers that put those solutions into play? And what do the people do about changing their leaders, bringing their leaders to account, with or without these term limits? Mm. Because as you can see, you can change the constitution without any problem, whether you're in Uganda or in the United States, and then have a president change. Or you could even have presidents, like I said, changing like musical chairs and things getting worse every single day. So term limits, I don't think, are the more important issue here in this, on this continent, no. What we need to be going much deeper than just presidential term limits. Oh, we need to be looking at a lot more than just the position uh, of I, I, president I of the country. But Simon, it's very hard to look beyond term limits when we cannot, in after sense, start to have conversations about leadership, about who is a good leader, because these people do not just remove term limits. They're acting like they remove term limits. Term limits are an abstract thing. No, term limits covers a system of ingraining the censorship of convincing the populace that there is only one leader so that they're not thinking about any other leader. It comes with institutionalized poverty. It comes with tribalism. It comes with a, a misallocation of resources and corruption. And when the situation is this way, you cannot start to have the deep conversation in governance because in many ways, African countries have not even taken the first step. The reality for other European countries, like you say, that seem to be developing without some limits, is because they've had a chance to develop a system of governance over time, historically, that unfortunately, because of colonialism and other factors, we in Africa have not been able to. But Patience. where we are right now, Patience, all the indicators show that when you take away some limits, there is bloodshed. No matter how long it takes, no matter how, uh, uh, how, how perfect it may seem, like in Rwanda now that it's developing, the fact that this is the kind of development that is being held by a threat. Patience, take a pause for a moment. I'm going to play this. Guests, take a pause for a moment. Patience, take a pause for a moment. I just want to play this. This is, again, at the African Union. A lot of action <laughs> happening at the African Union. This is President Obama at the African Union. I'm not too sure that any other head of state could have come to Addis and said this other than this particular president. Have a listen to what he has to say here. When a leader tries to change the rules in the middle of the game just to stay in office, it risks instability and strife, as we've seen in Burundi. And this is often... And this is often just a first step down a perilous path. And sometimes you'll hear a leader say, well, we're, I'm the only person who can hold this nation together. <laughs> if that's true, then that leader has failed to truly build their nation. Did you see his face there, Nigel? He was really serious. There was, there was a little swagger going on, but he was like, seriously, guys, you need to get this, this together. 
What do you make of yeah, that? Yeah, outsiders, and, 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 and remember outsiders that everybody just pushed you. back and said, come on, there's no way you'd have made that speech in Russia. Here you're talking to us, what you think is a council of kings. But guys, we can't keep focusing on this position of president. Mm. Many people come onto this continent, into these countries, and do business, set up you know, their dreams, and they never ever deal with the presidency. They're dealing with you and me. They're dealing with technocrats. They're dealing with people who are actually running the show, regardless of who the president is. And when they get frustrated, they're frustrated by those very other people. We need to be going deeper than simply the position of president. Mm. It is good to have a president who's going to keep stability, for instance, who's going to continue development, yes. But to talk about the need to switch presidents in order to create development. Right, Sammy, Sammy, you made that, that point really well and very thoroughly. Let me just move on. Omar, go ahead. So we have people who are echoing President Obama's point. We have David over here who says, I see Mugabe's argument about the will of the people, but the office can become a throne for a particular person. And then we have Gatwiri over here who says, good leadership is not about individuals, but systems. If a country needs an individual, then there is a problem. Nigel, why do you think there's such an attachment to individuals? Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm glad you've asked me that question. So, uh, like I said, I'm all about term limits. Um, I, I, you know, I truly believe in them. But I believe in them for, 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 for the reason that I stated before. Look, let's get more young people involved. Okay. But to answer your question about, um, you, know, you know, personalities and so forth, yeah, look, the common man on the street is, is, is interested in uh, bread and butter issues. Okay. Uh, I don't think they're interested in term limits. I think what they're interested in is good governance. And what they're interested, uh, you know, are, you know w along with good governance is also strong institutions. So uh, I, I, I think I, I agree with what Simon's saying. I think we spend a lot of time focusing on term Oh, Nigel, sorry. I know you're just about to say something really great, and we'll, we'll pick up with you in just a moment. Uh, Patience, but you are determined that this idea about a leader that stays and stays and stays is, is problematic. But let me just give you a couple of places. Uh, Belgium, Denmark, Turkey, Finland, Ireland, Italy. Their prime ministers could stay in power for as long as they continue to be voted in. You wouldn't say that these countries had an issue with democracy, would you? You know, oh, well, allow patients to ask. Patients. Yes, that's because the countries that you've mentioned actually have a system of elections that works. So you find that in Africa, the problem is twofold. You've removed some limits, and then the elections are, are, are not credible. Uh -huh. okay. You have incumbents who use state coffers, who have free access to state coffers, in Uganda, the incumbent started campaigning two years ago, and, and the opposition started campaigning three months ago. The um, incumbent mm. travels by helicopter. The, the opposition is traveling on terrible roads, and they're caught in the rain. And, you know, it, it, it's just not a level playing field. So sure. what happens is the opposition practically has no chance or as, president, as a presidency. Nobody does. Nobody ever assists the incumbent. You know, in such a situation. Okay, and Patience, I'm just going to check back somebody in. Somebody else has a chance if, if they are. All right, Patience, I'm just going to check back so, in with Sunny because uh, Rwanda is, this is an interesting milestone for Rwanda, Sunny, in terms of extending President Kagame's um, uh, time as a, as a president. Um, where do you th think uh, Rwanda will go? Well, I'll first start with some of the things that Patience said. We have one minute, so if you do that, I will, we won't find all out right, what, right. your no, thoughts no, be, about I'll Rwanda. Be, and i really like to hear about I'll those. i really, really fast. Yeah. First of all, uh, Patience talks about in Africa and Africa and Africa. Africa is not a country. You can talk about Yes, Rwanda, she knows that. She knows that. Sonny, no, where do you think, no, where do you think Rwanda will go? And then I'm wrapping up the okay. show. Where do you think Rwanda will oh, go? Oh, I think Rwanda, Rwanda, Rwanda is going to do great. I, I, I mean, just looking at uh, the, develop, the, the development uh, rates that we're going at, maybe 7% a year. Sonny I'm, and I'm, Simon I'm, I'm very and Patience confident. and Nigel, this conversation is much bigger than our main show. This is why we have a post show, stream.aldazira.com. <laughs> Extending the term limit of this show, but it's okay. It's democratic. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. See you online.
Hi, welcome back. This is the Streams Online Post Show. We're talking about African attitudes toward presidential turn limits. I thought what was, was interesting was Nigel and Simon, you basically agree governance is, is more important than maybe who the figurehead is up there. Um, but there are still so many heads of state who are in place for a very long time. Would you say that all of those countries are doing really well? Because that's, that's, the, that's the key, isn't it? It's like, how well are the countries no, doing? Is, no, you're right. No, you're right. I mean, I, I think what happens is if a country is doing well, okay, oh. you know, and I found out the other day that uh, Angela Merkel could go into a fourth term in 2017 or something like that. Yeah. I, 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 I was shocked. I was like, what? I, I couldn't believe it. But, you know, Germany is a strong country economically, right? Um, I think it's quite easy to simply say, okay, this country is not doing well, so therefore it's a term limit. Ah. You know, there's a lot of, thing, there's a lot of things that take place. If we're talking about corruption and saying, okay, this country, there's corruption, let's talk about the corrupter, okay? Because usually the corrupter is sitting in the West somewhere, right? How come we never focus on the corrupter? So if we're going to tell the story, let's tell it in its, full, in its fullness and let's do it properly, mm -hmm. right? So yes, term limits are, are, are an issue. Yes, they need to be addressed. Like I said, I'm all for them, but it's, it, I think when a country's not doing well, it's much bigger than just term limits. Mm. Omar. So we did yeah. something interesting. We put out an online poll to our online community asking them whether they think pre presidential term limits are necessary. So it's not a scientific poll, but nonetheless, you can see on my screen here that it's a landslide. 88% say yes, presidential term limits are necessary. Simon, a lot of our community online actually was tweeting in from, from the continent, from Africa. Why do you think this yes. is so popular? I mean, you've laid the case against why it might not be necessary, but why do you think so many people think it is necessary? No, 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 no not only why it might not be necessary. Term limits might be necessary for some communities, some countries are not necessary for others. Mm. That's, that's a right that's going to be given to the people within those uh, different countries. However, Simon, they don't always have the choice. Simon, but Simon, but Simon, whoa, whoa, whoa. Simon yes. they don't always have the choice though. What's the choice? What's the option? No, no, no. You can't say they don't always have the choice. They do have the choice. In Uganda, we have the choice. In Rwanda, they're going to you exercise do? their choice this weekend. Okay? And I'm not going to speak for Mali or any other country until yeah. they've held their election. But we've had the choice. We have the choice. And the whole point is to create that choice without saying, with or without the choice, with or without the system, you've got to have time limits. That doesn't work. You can't throw a blanket over the continent. But besides that, when we do a poll of this nature, who are we listening to? Who has the larger share of voice? You know, are, are we listening to the people or are we listening to the people who have internet access? Are we listening to the people who live in the cities yeah. and can afford to make use of that internet access? Yeah. We've got to really that's, begin that's questioning good, who we are talking to point point there, about, who we are representing. Uh -huh. When I hold a referendum in my country and go out to 15 million people, then what those 15 million people say should hold, that is democracy. Do you know if what, I do so, Simon, I, I, sh I should point out, remind people. With a, a number, but you're a, you were a Ugandan government spokesman, so why would you say anything to uh, to the contrary? I mean, this because I'm also no, but you know the, what? The UK you held a referendum you know, just last year about Scotland, right? Yeah. They didn't do an opinion poll; they yeah. held a referendum, sure. and that's what their law states. So, if another country chooses to do the same, shouldn't we follow that right rather than doing online polls? Yes, doing an online poll kind of gives you an indication, but then. The people that you're polling, you've got to take into account. If you go out to a guy on the street uh -huh. okay, and ask him, what do you want? He's not going to tell you anything about what the president does. That's not what his daily struggle is. His struggle has nothing yes. to do with who the president is. His struggle is getting food. His struggle is getting his kids into school. His struggle is stopping someone from dropping bombs onto his house. Okay? We have certain realities that people aspire to. And that's what we need to be focusing on when we talk about governance and leadership. Sure. For most of the people in these countries in Africa, they, they don't interact with the president. They interact with their local council leadership. That's where leadership is. That's, where, that's how they get to the president. But this, this immediacy is what we need to be looking at when we talk about leadership. If we talked about term limits and said we need term limits for the entire band of leadership, then I think the discussion will be much more interesting. But we always talk about term limits for the one position up there. Forget about who is going to be the local council, one, two, three, four, five chairperson. The people who actually control 
the resources. The people who actually have a direct impact All right, Simon, on the Simon, take a break for a moment. I just want to bring Omar right. back into the conversation. Omar, go so, ahead. So Simon was talking about how the continent is very diverse and each country should mm -hmm. have its basically make its own rules. But we have people here who disagree online. We have Abel over here who says the African Union is failing to use its voice against those who want to stay for a long time uh, for many, many reasons. And then we have James who says you're absolutely right. That's something the African Union should consider for the future is to set term limits. Patience, given the diversity of the continent, would you be in favor of a blanket measure like that that forces term limits on the entire continent? Uh, look, you know, uh, give me one example. That one is for no, patience. Is patience. No, Nigel, hold tight yeah. for a moment. Let's just hear what patience has to say. Personally, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. You can't have a term limit for an entire continent. It's ridiculous. But patience, yeah. what do you think? <laughs> I, I think the entire continent needs drastic measures because clearly what what we are using now the the um, the mediocrity the the lackluster way with which the African Union is handling issues is not working. So it would be very very good if we had some limits on the continent. If every president would say that I will do two times or maybe three times. And then we would have people speaking at the same level because the reason why uh, issues like Burundi are continuing, the reason why some people can't step in is because the presidents are not at the same level. They fear to shoot themselves in the foot. There is so much disparity between countries and there isn't a single voice. And this means that, you know, uh, important issues are just put under the carpet because the AU doesn't speak with one voice. The AU is ambiguous and the AU falters at every time. Nigel, what were you trying to say? Go ahead. Look, I, you know, I can't remember the last time the AU did something that I was like, look, you know what, I support that, okay? Where was the AU when Burundi was on fire? Okay, so I don't think if, if the AU came, if I was the president of Zimbabwe, and the AU came to us and said, uh, listen, so we're gonna impose term limits on you as a country. I'll tell them, you know, I'll tell them where to go. Because where were they? Where, where are they? And how significant is the AU on the African continent? And I'm sure Simon has an opinion on this, right? I think each country, and remember there's 54 countries here. Each country has, has its own government, has its own political system. I don't, I'm, I'm not from Rwanda, so I don't know what's happening there. I've been to Rwanda before. Um, and that's why when you ask me about, you know, what, what, you know, my word association, development, when I went to Kigali, I saw development, right? But I think it's important to let um, countries make their own decision. I think what Simon was saying, and I said earlier on about the common man on the street, you know, they're not as worried about things like term limits and, and so forth, like, you know, people like us who have internet and, and so forth, right? I think what they, con con you know, what they're concerned about is bread and butter issues, mm -hmm. and a lot of people haven't made the distinction between uh, why it's tough for them and governance issues. Um, and I think there's a wider conversation here, not just about term limits, but also just about, uh, you know, the level of corruption, the you know, ease of doing business in that country. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a plethora of issues that mm -hmm. I think we need to, you know, um, discuss when we're talking about term limits. Good point. Sure. Um, and we have done over the years, not just here on the stream, but on Al Jazeera as well. Um, Sunny, I mean, the, the, the issue with Rwanda is that your president has done such a phenomenal job. Rwanda is doing so well in terms of gender parity, in terms of Wi-Fi in Kigali, in terms of uh, um, women in power. There's, there's a, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, it, so it's... It, it, it makes people uncomfortable outside of Rwanda when after 14 years and then he carries on where they're maybe not used to that idea. What would you say to the rest of the world who's commenting on what's happening in Rwanda right now? What would your message be to them? I, I, find, it, uh, I find it amusing that you start with, you know, all the positives that his uh, system of government or his presidency has brought. Uh. And then you come out and say, well, you know, people are uncomfortable. What exactly are they uncomfortable about? The fact that there are clean streets, that there's good Wi-Fi, that there's security, yeah. that with there's women's empowerment. What exactly is their issue? Longevity, I think, is their issue. I know. So, I know it's their issue. Okay. So their issue is that he's going to continue doing a good job. Like I'm very confused. 
You're not confused. You're playing devil's advocate. You're not confused. What would be your message to them? You've read, you've read the articles. You know the stories. You know what people are commenting about Rwanda. You're not confused. You're being disingenuous. What would be your message to the rest of the world about this? Well, I'll, I'll just say, let, let the Rwandan people speak. And if they speak, hear them. That's, that's pretty much it. Mm. I will not presume to uh, get into issues uh, beyond our borders. Um, the Rwandan people can deal with their own local problems. And that's what I guess we're trying to do by this referendum tomorrow. Sure. We're watching that with great interest. Nigel and Patience and Simon and Sonny, thank you for hashing this. It's an old chestnut, an old African chestnut. Thank you for hashing it out with us once again here on the stream. I enjoyed your company. Omar, where do you want to leave us? I'll leave you with a couple of competing thoughts from Rwanda. We have Positive Rwanda says, we want Kagame to set an example not by stepping down, but by continuing to transform Rwanda. And on the other hand, we have Kitty, who is from Burundi, says, a presidential term is a temporary privilege with a clear expiry date. When we start playing with expired products, we get sick. I love that Africans have been debating backwards and forwards. No outsiders, just Africans. Oh, yeah, and then Omar. But That's he lives right. close. That's okay. Thank you very much, guests. It's been a pleasure having you on the stream today. Take care, everybody.